Hey guys, it's uh, midnight, but uh, so if I'm a little tired, that will explain why I'm a little tired because it's late and I should be in bed. But I got these pistons from Dave uh, just now. These are the old pistons out of the 503 that I recently replaced with the 582 on the Beaver. These pistons have 165 flight hours on them, so uh, probably close to 200 hours total running time. Uh, I only log uh, actual time in the air whenever I log my engine time in my engine logbook. I think that's the proper way of doing it. Anyway, I just wanted to show you what they look like after that amount of time, so between 160 and 200 hours of operation. Um, the carbon buildup. So this one has very little. I'm not sure maybe it got cleaned off because it's uh, it's actually very very good. Dave said he didn't clean them off though, so that one, uh, very little carbon buildup. And this one has a, sig I mean not a significant amount, but it's, you know, a, maybe maybe a millimeter thick in some areas down here. I just wanted to do a little bit of an experiment with sea foam. So see what I did is every 10 hours on the 503, I would run the engine and um, I would spray sea foam into the intake manifold, and uh, it would smoke and you know all that cool stuff as the as the sea foam burnt off. But then I would kill it with the chokes and extra sea foam. I would just keep spraying it in until the engine almost died because it wouldn't quite completely die, but it would come really close. I'd kill it with the chokes, turn off the the mags, and I would block the intake and block the exhaust. So I would seal all of that vaporized sea foam inside the engine. And I would do that for at least 24 hours before I ran the engine again. With the thought process of the sea foam will eat away at that carbon inside, it will make it soft and sludgy and dissolve it, if you will. And the next time I run it, all of that sea foam will have sort of What's the word I'm looking for? Um, dissolved into whatever fuel and oil is mixed is, is in the engine and then it'll just get burnt up and spewed out the back end. Sure enough, every time I started up the engine after that, it, it would not only start hard because it, my engine's inverted, the spark plugs are on the bottom, so all that crap and sludge, you know, went right into the spark plugs and flooded it. So it started hard, but I, you know, I'd always get it to start. And then, yeah, the, the tail would just be covered in in little black dots of liquid carbon flying out the the muffler the exhaust so i have not actually taken sea foam and sprayed it onto some carbon and let it sit for 24 hours to see just what it would do so can't really do anything with this one because it's pretty carbon free although i'll spray some on there anyway just to see but this one see if i can get up close enough so you can kind of see what's going on there i should get something that will maybe you guys are all going to scream, oh, metal on metal's terrible. Well, I'm not ever using these pistons again. So you can see it's on there pretty good. It'll come off if I scrape it, but you gotta, you got to scrape pretty hard. So it does come off, but you got to scrape pretty hard. So I'm going to spray sea foam on it. I'm going to let it sit for 24 hours, and we're going to come back down, and I'm going to see if it comes off easier, number one. Number two, has it melted or dissolved or anything at all. So... Um, yeah, I guess technically I got to do this tomorrow night at midnight. I probably won't. It'll probably be closer to like 20 hours because I don't want to stay up till midnight tomorrow night. So anyway, spray some sea foam on. And now I will just let that sit for 24 hours and we'll see what happens. So that's sort of the experiment. I guess I will see you in a minute because for you it'll be a minute and for me it'll be one sleep and a whole bunch of snacks and maybe some bacon and eggs because bacon and eggs. All right, see you in a split second tomorrow. All right, here we are. It's uh, not 24 hours later, but like 20 hours later. I covered them up with baggies here because I didn't want the sea foam to all evaporate. And this is what I'm seeing. So let's see what we have here. So I'm just rubbing it with my finger. It doesn't really do a whole lot, does it? Well, I guess it kind of is coming off. 
Yesterday when I did this, and I didn't get it on camera, but I should have, when I rubbed the carbon, it was just dry, and it didn't come off of my finger at all. And there is a little bit coming off there, but it's not really a whole lot. So I'm not sure if this is actually a great way. Although it does, I mean, it's coming off with my finger. Yeah, there's more coming off as I go. And I suppose if this was inside of an engine going at 6,000 RPM, there'd be a whole lot more pressure in there than there is with just my finger. I mean, it does, it does come off a lot more readily than it did last night before I put the seafoam on. So, maybe there's something to it? I don't know. Anyway, this is what my pistons looked like after 160 hours of putting seafoam in the engine, um, just direct induction every 10 hours. So, I mean, the fact that they're really, they're nowhere near where you would need to take it apart to decarbonate, I mean, that is definitely something that's got at least that much time on it again to go before you would have to worry about it. Yeah, see, it, it, the carbon is coming off, for sure. Just, just a sec. There, I wiped it off fairly aggressively with just a shop rag, and it's a lot smoother than it was yesterday. So a lot of the carbon did get dissolved, I guess, because it, it was very ridgy and very bumpy, and now it's very smooth. So I guess there's something to it. The carbon or the uh, sea foam gets in there and sort of dissolves the top layer maybe. Maybe if I did like a whole bunch of treatments to it regularly, which <laughs> I do every 10 hours. So I wonder if there is something to it. I, I've been told that there is. I've just never seen first-hand evidence of it actually working, but I think it actually does. I think uh, it, if nothing else, it's not hurting anything. So, I think I'm going to also start putting some seafoam right in the gas and letting it burn um, just as I run the tank of gas and see if that helps as well. But the ultimate goal here is to not have to take your engine apart every 150 hours to decarbonate. If I can just decarbonate every 300 hours when I have to take it apart to overhaul it anyway, as per the recommended, uh, the manufacturer's recommendation, that saves an entire disassembly of the engine. An air-cooled engine, the 503, not a big deal. They come apart real easy, but liquid-cooled engines like the 582, they're a pain. Taking draining out all that fluid, and then, yeah, it's just it's an extra step that really slows things down. So, anyway, um, that's sort of my experiment in seafoam, I guess. So, I will uh, continue to keep you apprised of any sort of. So any results? There's the, there's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, any sort of results I get with the 582 running the seafoam in it the way that I am. I'm, anytime I have it apart, I'll make sure that I, you know, put a little video up and show you guys what the carbon buildup's like. Or anytime I have the exhaust manifold off where I can see the rings. I'll let you guys know, just so you can kind of keep an eye on it with me. Uh, just because it's interesting. Just uh, another step that we can do to help keep our engines healthy. So, anyway, that's all for now, I guess. I'm going to... Go to bed, I guess, because it's late, and I'll see you guys next time.